Good morning. I will be translating the message of Reverend Danny Reyes. Peace to you, brothers and sisters. Today, I want us to look into the subject matter of how to overcome temptation. We live in this world which exists after Adam and Eve sinned against God. It is a world permeated by sin. It is a finite universe. This is a world where God reigns and where Satan awaits for his punishment. For these reasons, temptation is inevitable in this world until the day when we have attained the incorruptible and glorified body before the sovereign God. This journey from being imperfect to perfection involves temptation. So how do we overcome temptation? I want us to examine a period in the life of Joseph of how he overcame. From Joseph's life, we witnessed many ups and downs, countless challenges and false accusations, but through it all, God protected and preserved Joseph. Specifically, during a certain stage in his life, Joseph taught us lessons on temptation. And this is recorded in Genesis chapter 39. We know for a fact that Joseph was sold to slavery by his brothers. He was taken down to Egypt and ended up a slave in Potiphar's household. According to scripture, there were two statements that described Joseph. First, the Lord was with Joseph. Second, the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Joseph found favor in Potiphar's eyes and became in charge of his household. Potiphar entrusted Joseph with everything except his wife. Under this arrangement, other than Potiphar's wife and him, everything else was under Joseph's charge. This promotion can be said as a blessing in the midst of unfortunate circumstance. From a slave to a caretaker, the Lord was with Joseph. Now let me ask you, can a person who has the presence of God in his life be spared from temptation? Definitely not. No one is exempted from temptation. The Bible also describes Joseph as well-built and handsome. It didn't take long before his master's wife took notice of Joseph and wanted to commit an immoral act with him. Here we see that a man who has God's presence and has success in everything is not excused from being tempted. It is wrongful to think that one who has the Lord in his life is spared from temptation. In the Old Testament, Abraham was a man of faith. Abraham left his homeland, his people, to go to a place where God was leading him. God did not disclose where he was going, except that his presence shall go before Abraham. By faith, Abraham went on this journey with God. And Abraham is called the father of faith. The father of faith, Abraham, encountered temptation and failed. Twice he lied that his wife, Sarah, was his sister. And this was a half lie to protect his life from danger. Once God asked Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son, Isaac. This was not an easy test. Praise God, Abraham passed it. A man who was the father of faith faced temptation himself. When Jesus was on earth, he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. He faced the tempter, Satan. But who led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted, tempted by Satan? Scripture says the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. So God does allow temptations in our lives. Let us not be misled that believers can be exempted from temptations. Now, years ago, my mother-in-law was diagnosed with cancer. She had to undergo surgery, and with much prayers, we were very thankful to God 
for his divine care and providence. During the course of her treatment, people were asking me questions. Why does someone who loves the Lord and saves and serves him faithfully, like her, get hit by cancer? This mindset raises a human perspective that people loved by God, those whom the Lord calls to serve, are spared from temptation. That is absolutely untrue. What are some outcome of temptation? One, temptation reveals the stability of our foundation. Second, overcoming temptation reveals the beautiful witness of a believer's life. Inwardly, temptation brings to light one's foundation. Outwardly, temptation, when conquered, highlights God's presence in one's life. Imagine a tree. How would you know how deep its roots are? Or how do you test its resilience against storm? One could only imagine these, or one could only examine these during the presence of a storm. I want us to have this mindset that you and I are certain to face temptation. We who are in the Lord will face temptation. And knowing this truth, we can be sober and prepared. Having this thought, we won't blame God in the face of it. We know that God equips us, and we know that we don't end up holding God responsible or forsaking our faith. We recognize that God's grace sustains us through temptations. I hope that this is clearly settled before I proceed to my next point. No one is an exemption from temptation, and having said that, we need to be sober, we need to hold on to God, and let us not blame God. Recalling Joseph's position in Potiphar's household, his attractive appearance, his capability, admiration came naturally. Potiphar's admiration for Joseph went beyond what was acceptable. The tempter used her sight to entice Joseph. Her eyes spoke a thousand words. Eyes can deliver different forms of messages. Not only did she express her offer by her looks, she vocally expressed her lustful intention towards Joseph. She even grabbed him by his cloak. Here's a woman above Joseph enticing him to sin by all means. As if this wasn't enough, she tempted Joseph day after day. Under all these circumstances, this was far from easy. You and I cannot dictate temptation. It is an external force. We cannot anticipate temptation. Joseph was a slave who belonged to his master. He cannot run away. When he does that, he could get killed. This world is very enticing. I have been driving along EDSA for some time, and when you're in EDSA, billboards are all over. And these are commercial ads. I mean, many of them are commercial ads of women who are in their skimpy clothing. Now, survey says that reckless driving happens when vehicles pass by these commercial billboards. Drivers' attentions are derailed. So these are temptations which can't be avoided unless you take another route to your destination. During the lockdown, we learned buying things online. When we search for something in the web, we notice that all other related stuff start to appear in our social media apps. The net bombards us with countless ads, and we end up with impulse buying. We live in a temptation-filled environment. Joseph avoided being alone with Potiphar's wife. When we are aware of our area of weakness, it is best to withdraw ourselves from that situation, run away from it. When one's weakness is gambling, stay away from casinos. A child once told me that his dad is into pornographic movies. How can one avoid this? 
where we can go to the filter setting and block pornographic items from popping up. Now, these are some ways of escape. But when external temptation is met with an inward desire, that person is bound to fall and sin. Joseph was wise to avoid temptation. One day when none of the servants was present, Potiphar's wife grabbed the opportunity to entice Joseph one more time. And Joseph fled. If we could avoid temptation, we apply appropriate measures. If we need to run away, then we run as far as we could. How could Joseph have the courage to flee from the temptress? The answer is found in Genesis chapter 39, verse 9. It says there, Joseph said, No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Joseph's inner strength was rooted in his fear to sin against his God. When temptation comes to attack us, it is an, our inward desire not to sin against God which will stand the test. Our fear of the Lord, our aim to please God, these will empower us to overcome temptation. Job's temptation involved God's permission and Satan's attacks. He lost everything. Now these are all external manifestations. Testings and temptations. God uses situations as testings in order to grow our faith. Satan uses situations as temptations that we might sin against God. God never tempts us. God's intention is always to mature us through trials and testings. Satan's goal is for us to fall into sin through temptation. James says that each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Just like in fishing, one places a bait on the hook and submerges it in water. Now the best time to catch a fish would depend on how hungry the fish is and how attractive the bait can be. Similarly, overcoming temptation or falling into it depends on how strong the inward desire is. If our desire is towards God, pleasing Him in all things, then it would be easy to resist temptation. Now, I am not fond of sweets. When people give me cakes on my birthday, uh, would I be tempted to eat them? But if something I love is placed before me like a hot pot, will I be drawn to it? Now, which of the two will have a greater force of temptation on me? The cake or shabu shabu? When we are exposed to temptations that appeal to our appetites and desires, we have greater chances of yielding to them. The opposite is true. The less appealing they are, the less chance of yielding. Overcoming temptation, therefore, doesn't fully depend on the object of enticement, but a substantial part of it rely upon the inward desire of the person. What is your desire? To do that which pleases God? Could that be a desire not to sin against God? When we desire the things of God, our chance of falling into temptation becomes dim. But when we entertain the desires of the flesh, we are heading towards destruction. In spite of Joseph's rejection, Potiphar's wife threw false accusation at him, which led to his imprisonment. Brothers and sisters, even when we have conquered temptation, the situation might still be far from ideal. Don't be discouraged. Whatever we have gone through becomes not our stumbling block, but a stepping stone to a higher level of maturity. 
Look at Joseph after he was imprisoned. The Lord remained with him, blessed him in everything. He was able to interpret the dream of the butler and finally ended up interpreting Pharaoh's dreams until Joseph was promoted as Egypt's prime minister. As a review, let's go over our le learnings for today. How do we overcome temptation? First, we need to have this mindset. As believers, we still face temptations. When we think otherwise, we end up blaming God when temptations arise. We fall into disappointment, and we need to be sober and prepare ourselves to overcome temptation. Second, when we are confronted by different kinds of enticement, let us avoid them as much as possible. If we have no choice but to face them, we have to be ready with an inward resolution not to sin against God, but to please Him in all things. Lastly, when we have triumphed over temptation, let's remember that things will still be far from perfect. What matters is that God uses this as our stepping stone to a higher level of faith and maturity. So brothers and sisters, let us trust God who is faithful and who enables us to overcome temptation. Thank you.